ora and welcome to our Getting Started with InDesign tutorial series. This series has been tailor-made to fit the CCS Disability Action templates. The focus of this series is to teach you to edit your own documents in InDesign. In these videos, we specifically use the CCS Disability Action Annual Report. By the end of this series, you will have a basic knowledge of InDesign and the ability to edit your own annual reports, DL brochures, A4 and A5 flyers. There are seven videos belonging to this series of tutorials. The first video that you are watching will explain to you how the InDesign application is organized. In the second video, we will teach you how to use the hand tool and zoom tool. Next, we explain how to use layers followed by two chapters dedicated to the type tool. You will learn how to work with paragraphs and the formatting of text. We will show you how to set bullet points and to use auto numbering. The sixth chapter is dedicated to setting images inside your chosen template. We will show you how to add, rotate and scale them. Finally, you will learn how to fit images perfectly into the predefined frames of the templates. Please ensure you are following the CCS Disability Action brand standards. This will guide you on each brand element in order to maintain a consistent, high-quality, visual brand identity. The rest of this video will give you a brief introduction into InDesign. Let's begin by opening InDesign. In Windows 7, you can access InDesign in different ways. You can have a shortcut on your desktop, or click your Start button, click All Programs, and find InDesign in the list. Double-click your mouse, and the application will open. Now you are inside InDesign. Next, open the template you need to edit. You can open a template in different ways. You can open a template by clicking on File and then Open. A pop-up window will appear, and you can find your template in the list. A faster way to open a template is to click on the Open icon and the same pop-up window will appear and again you can find your template in the list. If you are more keyboard orientated, you can press Ctrl and O. Once again, the same pop-up window will appear. If you have already worked on the document and used it recently, you will find a thumbnail representation here. You can open your project directly by clicking on the thumbnail. Now we will show you the different elements that form this application. At the top of the interface, you will find the menu bar. This is the standard menu for all Adobe applications. Adobe is a suite of design software that includes the InDesign program. Next to it, you will find the application bar. It allows you to zoom in, zoom out or toggle your rulers on or off. It allows you to display or switch off guides. Below the menu and application bar, you will find the control bar. It contains actions and option selectors. It is one of the most important parts of the InDesign interface. The control bar is content sensitive, so depending on what you are selecting, it will contain different actions and options. For example, when you select the type tool, the control bar will change to information relating to typing and formatting text. 
When you choose the Line tool, the control bar will change to information related to working with lines. The control bar will always change depending on what tool you are using. Under the control bar, you will find the Document tab. The tab is a representation of the document you have open at the time you are working with InDesign. Under the Document tab, you will find the Horizontal Ruler and its matching vertical ruler is shown on the left side of the screen. Next to the left side ruler, you will locate the Toolbox. Inside the Toolbox, you will see several tools that you will use while working on the document. You will learn how to use the most important tools during this series of videos. If you cannot see a specific tool, it means that the tool is hidden. You can identify hidden tools by clicking on the small white triangle located at the bottom right corner of the tools box. For example, click and hold your mouse over the type tool. A flyout selection will appear. Move your mouse pointer over the tool you need and let the mouse button go. Now you can see that the Type tool has been replaced by the Type on Path tool. To use your keyboard to choose the tools you need, note the Type tool is matched with the letter T. When you type T on your keyboard, the Type tool will be selected. Keyboard shortcuts can be very useful in the future. Note them down and keep a list of shortcuts next to your keyboard. While working on an InDesign project, most designers recommend keeping your selection tool on. This tool is represented by the black arrow and associated with the letter V on your keyboard. To recap, remember that when you type T on your keyboard, the Type tool will be selected. And when you choose V, the Selection tool will be active. On the right side of the screen, you will find the InDesign palettes or panels. Those two words are used to describe the same tool. The palettes are an essential part of InDesign. For example, Pages is a palette and is a mini representation of your document. When you open it, you will see thumbnails representing your project pages. You can scroll on it and find the page you want to display in your document. Double-click the thumbnail to see any page at any time. By scrolling to the top and double-clicking the first thumbnail, you will be back at the first page of your document. Clicking on this double arrow will pull back the flyout window and pages will pull back again. It is best to keep palettes open. When you click the double arrow, you will display all the palettes contained in this column. Now you can organize this side of the palettes. For example, you can move out the stroke palette by dragging the entire palette to the right side. This will hide the palette. Let's try with another palette and drag it to the other side. If you need to see what's inside the palette, you can simply click on them and a flyout window will display its content. Once you are finished using the palette, click on the double arrow and the flyout will retract again. You can also fully display the content of the second row. Click on the double arrow on top of it to show all of its content. You should only have pages and layers displayed on the first column and have the second column retracted. It is your decision how you want your palettes organized. If you cannot find a palette, click on Windows in the menu bar and select the palette you need. The middle of the screen is where you see the main document you are working on. The lowest part of the screen is the status bar. 
it shows the page number you are working on. By clicking on this drop-down arrow, you will display all the pages you have in your document. You can then select a number and the document will jump to that page. You can also swipe to pages by clicking on the left or right arrow or go directly to the first page or the last page. Congratulations! Now you have a better understanding on how the InDesign application is organized. Before starting the next tutorial, it would be a good idea to practice your new skills.